Hello everyone. This video has the purpose of showing you the data migration tool called MFL, which stands for Master File Loader. This tool has been developed by Gcon4 to make the process of data migration to Aggresso much easier. The first thing you need to do is to download the files from the Gcon4 website, and once you have them in your computer, you open the executable file. So here in this folder, I have all the files downloaded from the GCOM4 website, and we're going to access this, which is the executable file. Once the MFL is open, this is the window you should be looking at. So first, before showing you how the MFL works, I'm going to give you briefly an overview of the MFL window. On the top left side of the screen, we see the fields in which we need to enter our username, the client we're connecting to, our aggressor password, and the next field is very important, which is the URL for the MFL web service. Once we have entered that information, we just click the connect button. Okay, now we're connected to Aggresso through the MFL, and I'm going to continue giving you an overview of the MFL window. On the bottom left side of the screen, we see the generate button, which is used to generate all the Excel templates that we're going to populate and use to upload the data into Aggresso through the MFL. Then we have the date format field in which we can select the date format that we're going to use in our templates. So that can be day, month, year, or month, day, year. Right below the date format field, we have the functionality of standard mode or test mode. The test mode, what it does is do a validation of all the data we want to upload to Aggresso, but it doesn't do any uploading. It only does a validation. It's just a test. And if we select standard mode, Aggresso will also do the validation, but if the validation goes well, all the data will be uploaded to Aggresso. Then we have the load button, which is used to actually load the information into Aggresso, whether it's an insertion of data or an update of the data already in Aggresso. Finally, on the right-hand side of the screen, we have three buttons. The first is just general information of the MFL and the version we're using. Then we have the lock button, which is the button that shows us all the lock of errors that we have when we're trying to upload data into Aggresso. And if we want to clear that lock, we just click on the clear button that's right below. Now I'm going to show you how to generate the Excel templates that we're going to use to upload the data into the system. To do that, we just click on the generate button. Now using this window, we're going to generate our Excel. The first thing we need to do is to select the master file that we're going to upload the data for. So here we have the choice to select all the standard master files that Aggresso has. And if by any chance we need to upload data for a user-defined master file, we just select attribute. And then we select the attribute for the user-defined master file that we want to upload the data. So for this example, I'm going to show you how to generate the template for the supplier master file. So we just select supplier. This section of the screen is to retrieve any data that's already in Aggresso and that we want to update. The section below is where we select all the fields or all the columns that will be part of our template. By default, the MFL will check all the mandatory fields that are part of that master file. As you can see here, we have several fields already checked and we can't uncheck them. The same goes with the tab itself. For example, the address tab for supplier, it's a mandatory tab and we cannot exclude that tab. As you can see, it's grayed out. Then in the bottom section of the screen, we have three functionalities. The unprotected or protected workbook, what it does is that when we generate the template, if it's unprotected, any person can do changes to the template and if it's protected, the workbook itself will be protected for changes. The sample row functionalities, what it does is that when we generate the template, we'll create sample rows in the template with sample data 
just as an example or a guide for the user to populate the template. So if we want to include sample rows, we just click here. And if we don't, we just click again. The accepted values functionality, what it does is that it includes an extra sheet in the workbook with all the accepted attribute values that are valid. This is to avoid the user that's populating the template to include unvalid values. However, even if the user includes not valid values, the MFL will validate. And then we have this button, which is to actually generate the template. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to generate the Excel template. So for this example, I'm going to select the supplier master file and I'm going to select some additional fields. The address tab has to be included because it's a mandatory tab. So I'm just going to select some additional fields such as address and description. And I'm also going to include the relations tab. If by any chance the master file or the attribute that we're generating this template for has any flexi fields set up in the system, we would be seeing those flexi fields as additional tabs. So I'm also going to include this flexi tab which was already created and linked to the supplier master file. And as you can see, by default, it has already selected the mandatory fields. And if I also want to include the optional fields, I just select it. It works the same way as the other tabs. Once we have selected all the tabs and all the fields that we want to include in our template, we select if we want our workbook to be protected, if we want to include sample rows, and if we want to include the accepted value sheet. So I'm just going to generate an unprotected workbook with sample rows and with accepted values. And we just click here to generate the Excel. Once we click there, the system will prompt a window in which we include the name of the Excel file. We type our name, click Save, and then the MFL starts generating the Excel. Once this red bar is filled, our Excel template will be generated. Once the template has been generated, the MFL will prompt this message. We just click OK. And if we want to open our Excel file, we just click on the red bar. So now this is the template that the MFL has generated. As you can see, it has the tabs that we selected, the supplier tab, the address tab, and the relation tab, also the flexi field tab, and it also has included the accept the values tab because I selected this option. It also has included some sample rows because I selected this option. So now we can start populating the data into our template. Key things that we need to know when we're filling our template the first thing is that we need to fill all the columns with the word mandatory on top of them. The ones that said optional, we can leave empty. An additional thing that might be useful when we're filling the templates is this default value row. If a value is applicable for all the rows, you can just put that value in the default value row. For example, in this currency column, the USD is common for all the supplier registers we're creating. So what I do is just, I insert the USD value on the default value row. So we fill all the mandatory columns and the optional ones if we have the data. Then we go to the address tab and it works the same way. We just need to fill the mandatory columns. And if there's a common value that is applicable for all the registers, we just include it in the default value row. A thing to note here is that, for example, in the case of address, we can include several addresses for one particular supplier. In that case, in this sequence number column, we just include the consecutive numbers starting from zero. So for example, in this case, has two addresses. So we include the first address as a zero, and then the second address as a one. 
in the sequence number column. Finally, we go to the relations tab. If we want to know what relations are defined for this particular master file, we can go to the accepted values tab. So here we have a section for relations and we can actually see if a particular relation is mandatory or not. In this accepted value tab, we also see all the valid values for all the attributes that are applicable for the columns in the other tabs. So here we can see all the relations that have been defined for the supplier master file. So I'm going to pick account and project. So back to the relations tab, we include as many rows per supplier as the amount of relations we have. So for example, I've selected to insert relations for project and account. So I will include two rows per supplier for each one of those relations, one for project and one for account for each supplier. If one of the relations has been defined as multiple, let's say in this case, account is a multiple relation on supplier, I could also include another row with account and account 2014, but I need to make sure that this line number column is filled once I have a multiple relation. So in this case, I would include zero and one. And if I have more, I just keep increasing this number. So now we're done filling our template, so we just save it. We then go to the MFL and we click on load. We select our Excel file and now the MFL is going to start loading the information. So as mentioned before, when we select standard mode, Aggressor also does the validation and if all the validation goes well, it uploads the information in the system. So this is a sample of the error log that the MFL generates when it finds any errors. As you can see, in this case, it is showing us that it found three errors when it tried to upload the data into the system. Two of the errors are related with non-existent values, both in the relations tab. The MFL not only validates if a value exists in the system, for example, the other error that it found was that one of the fields in the Flexi tab had a string type data when it was actually a number field. So this error log, as you can see, shows us very explicitly all the errors that the MFL found. So what we need to do is just correct them and then try to load it again. So based on the error log that the MFL showed, I made all the adjustments in our template. So in the relations tab, I changed the relations with project and account to valid values. And in the flexi tab, I changed this field for a number field. So once we've done all the corrections to the Excel template, we just save it again, go back to the MFL and try to load it again. So we click load, select our Excel template, and the MFL will first do the validation and everything goes well, it will upload the information to the system. So once the MFL has successfully uploaded the information, we can see the message here with all the rows that were processed and the time that it took to process. So now we're sure that the information was uploaded to Aggresso. If we want to confirm it, we just go to Aggresso and we open the supplier master file. And let's confirm if it uploaded the information. So supplier number 9002, for example. So here we can see all the information that we uploaded from the Excel template in the supplier tab, in the relations tab, and in the flexi tab. Finally, I'm going to show you how to use the retrieval functionality when creating an Excel template. This functionality works not only for retrieval of data, sort of like a browser, but also allows you to update or correct data already in the system or fill empty fields in your database. To use this functionality, we click on the Generate button, and then we need to use this section of the screen. The first thing we do then is to select our master file. So in our example, we're going to keep using the supplier master file. 
and then we use this section to apply any filter that we want to retrieve the data from Agresso into our template. So let's say we need to update the addresses of our suppliers that are located in Great Britain. So to do that, in this section, we're going to specify that we only want to retrieve the suppliers that have Great Britain as a country. So first, in the master file sheet column, we need to select the tab where our filter is located. So I know that the country field, for example, which is going to be my filter, it's located in the supplier tab. So I select supplier, and then in the field column, I look for my field, which is country code. In the operator field, these are the options that I can select. So in my case, because I'm going to retrieve all the suppliers from Great Britain, I'm going to select like, and the value is GB for Great Britain. If I need to add any more filters to my retrieval, I just keep adding rows. After I have selected all the filters or all the conditions that I want to put into my retrieval, I just select the fields that I want to include in my template just as we did before. So I just tick on this checkboxes to include the corresponding field and do the same with the tabs. So the address tab is included already and the relation tab, if I want to include it in my template or as part of the update that I want to do, I also include it. So for this case, I'm not going to include it. And then I can also select if I want the workbook to be protected and if I want to include the accepted values sheet. As you can see, the sample rows button is deactivated because we're already including data in the template. So after we have specified our retrieval filters or our retrieval conditions, and also all the fields or all the columns that we want to include in our template, we just click the generate button. We type the name of our template and we click save. Once it's finished, we click OK, and then we click on the red bar. So our Excel will be then open. And if you notice, in the country code column, we can see only the suppliers that have GB or Great Britain as a country code. So after we've generated the template with the data, we can edit whatever field we want. We save our template and then we load it to the system through the MFL just as we did before using the load button. So that's all for this video. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, doubts, or additional comments, you need to go to the MFL website and click on the contact button. Then you fill the form with your questions or queries and click send.